yeah, it feels like a feels like an eye. A little flash out there. You decide you're just gonna come in on the surface, I guess. Some rafter, huh? Absolutely. Gonna come right in. Big old, big old head. Big old head Look at on that, that fish one. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Scott Walsh here from Midwest Outdoors. I'm fishing today with the good friend of mine, Mark Court. We've known each other for a long time. Don't get to fish too often together. But we're on a beautiful, if a slightly angry Sturgeon Bay today. It's kind of windy and pretty gloomy, but uh, Mark seems to think boat control is not going to be an issue today, and we're going to get on some fish like this. Sturgeon Bay's got that big smallmouth reputation, but uh, plenty of these around too, huh? It's absolutely got some big walleyes too. And and that's really what we're gonna do today, Scotty. We're gonna cover a lot of water this morning. And honestly, the conditions are not perfect. Um, we've had a big east blow today, and so the water's really cold. So we're gonna have to slow down and work these areas, but with a little hard work, good electronics, we're gonna find them. All right. There's one, bud. Good one. Feels good. Gonna take a hoop. I'm gonna hit spot lock here. You know, we've got this wind blowing point, Scotty, I think. What we can do, let's get this fish in, and then what we'll do is we can spot log and use that jog feature and just move around and break it down really tight. And she got a little, got a little spunk in this one. Finally seen the boat. Yeah. Realized yeah. it was hooked. Those fish don't know it's cold water. There's there we nice go. Fish. Yeah, oh yeah, nice solid eye there, huh? Nice one, bud. You know, anytime you're fishing, especially in the springtime. When you've got an east wind and we're fishing that east shore, what it's doing is actually making the water colder. So what we had to do is move around and move around, and now we found 53 degree water. And hey, yeah, walleye. yeah, and we pulled up here and we were here or what six casts, yeah, seven casts, exactly. and wham, just like that. So yep. So what we found here is a point. Even though it's a little bit offshore here, it's actually hitting the structure and creating a current seam. So what we're doing is we're actually casting the shore and kind of following that current seam and these fish are holding right there. So we're using the spot lock jog feature and what we're doing is making 10, 15 casts and moving, 10, 15 casts and moving. So what it's really doing is allowing us to break down this structure. There's a good one, Scott. All right, on the rip bait again? Yep. Better. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you what, Scotty. <laughs> That's green bait gold right huh? there. Is that huh? something? Look at how pretty that fish is. Yeah, that's me. And you told me that like we well probably wouldn't catch a ton of fish today, but when we did, they'd be good ones. Yeah. And you weren't you weren't lying. That's the second one like that. Absolutely. <laughs> so what what we're doing is we're actually just going along this break here, and the wind's ripping around this point. So what I want to see is where that current's meeting these rocks, and you can see how big some of these boulders are. Um, we can come over here and hit zoom and you can see the depth of that rock. But the other thing we can do is just basically slide the cursor over to any one of these edges, hit mark, mark, and actually mark a waypoint. And now it shows up on my GPS and I can actually go fish those actual edges. So, or if I mark a pot of fish, I can actually just slide the cursor over, come back and fish those fish. Hey, Scotty, can you hit that talon real quick? That's one of the one of the neat features of the one boat network is, is you can drop that talon, for example, from anywhere in the boat, whether it's from the bow and a foot pedal, a remote around your neck, the hummingbird unit yourself, or even on the talon itself if you need to. Even your phone for that matter. I just changed to that gold bait, been throwing purple. And uh, we had a fish that we caught on this corner earlier, and we slipped down, fished another waypoint, changed colors, and we spot lock jogged back to this other one and a couple casts in there and wham. Hit it on the fall. Feels like an all right one. Another good one. There we go. Nice work. Thanks for the net, buddy. You know, the other little adjustment I made there, Scotty, is I jogged out a little bit just to get us off that break. I thought maybe with that sun, those fish might slide a little bit deeper. I wanted just so those baits would come off that break. I'll tell you what. Green Bay. It's a lot of fun, yeah, especially that's, cast. That's a pretty fish. They are. These Real fish pretty. are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. There's a good one, Scotty. Yeah? Yep. Gonna take a net? Uh, yeah. Really good one. Oh, geez. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess I'm taking that. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> <laughs> what, awesome. What a tank. That right there is what you come to Green Bay for. Tell you what. Nice. That's what we worked hard so for all day. What a beast, huh? That one's close to 30, isn't it? 29. 29. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's a nice looking fish, too. Just a big healthy. Beast. Beautiful. Fun day on the water today, huh, Mark? It was. Yeah. Nice mixed bag of fish. Absolutely. And you know, the conditions were tough. But I'll tell you, the boat control that the One Boat Network gave us was absolutely a key to our success. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, a lot of wind today. Without that, it would have been tough. Thanks for watching today. I'm Scott Wall, and for Mark Hort, stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors. <laughs>